How's it going, YouTube? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we are covering the EU WCQ that just wrapped up. Congratulations to our good friend winner here, who won with Tenpai Dragon. Actually, no Fiendsmith Snake Eye in the finals. One of the most entertaining events I've ever seen. Not because of the production quality, even though it was good. Just because the last few games were just almost too sad that they were just funny. Before we begin, like the video, subscribe. We're going to cover everything that happened and talk about the next steps for Yu-Gi-Oh! Because this is the final, final stretch of the Yu-Gi-Oh! competitive season. Because next up in September is the World Championship, which is happening in Seattle this year. So yeah, again, I've, I've made this face quite a bit during this tournament. And before we dive right in, shout out to Israeli Dragon Duel champion of two years now, back-to-back, -back, also becoming back-to-back -back Dragon Duel European champion. And this guy is from my locals, you have. Shout-out to him. I mean, back-to-back -back European championship in Dragon Duel. I mean, he played Ubel, by the way, as far as I know. So congratulations and huge shout-out. Breakdown of the top 64. Half were Snake Eye. But none of them actually made it to the finals. Tenpai... An obvious great contender with you, Bell. Ritual Beast making it all the way to the finals. Runic Stun, actually a natural opponent to the meta because the you know it's an anti-meta deck. I think similar to Ritual Beast, basically. And Memento taking up three percent. I'm pretty sure it's like one or two decks, and the others are ten percent. Uh, Branded probably in the others, maybe. I don't even know honestly, but not a very good showing for Branded during this event. We had a lot of very funny things in this event, and we've had um, a lot of shifters and a lot of Mulcharmies, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, you know, I've mentioned this in the NAWCQ, and a lot of people kind of like disagreed in the comments, that not a lot of pro players actually made top cut, and this is also very, very true here. The bigger names that you're used to seeing in like World Qualifier Points playoffs... And, you know, the bigger names in the scene, in the European scene at least, not actually present at all in top 8 or top 16 even. So, does this say something about how skilled the format is? Without taking away anything from the people who won and did really well, my personal opinion is that decks that have explosive one-card combos backed up with 20 non-engine hand traps with cards like Shifter... Well, Charmy Perulia, and specifically Dogwood, Dogwood, Spooky Dogwood. That was the, the main thing. It makes the format less skillful, and I don't really care what anybody says. This is my opinion, and I think it is a fact. Um, very crazy board states with uh, the Snake Eye Fiendsmith cards that ended up kind of choking at the end, even though it's like, you know, 50% representation in Top Gun. And shout out to the European team as well. I think the event itself was an absolute W, besides the fact that they blew up a fuse and they had like to evacuate the, the venue. We're going to dive into some games now and talk about the actual things that happened. But I think in terms of production, not a lot of time spent between games. Matches running really, really quickly. We are at 9 p.m. local time for Berlin and the day is over. Which, is, which I think is really good for an event this size. A lot of interesting interviews. They did like breakdowns with the winners with like replays on the screen. I think that was, that was absolutely fire. Now, let's go ahead and um, put this in the background. We can see here the finals between Ritual Beast and Tenpai Dragon. Both decks are kind of like ignorant to like a lot of stuff because they kind of rely on Floodgates to play, sort of. And here we see, I think, the, the main culprit of this event, I think the strongest card that we've seen this weekend was Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood. I think that the fact that you have a lot of decks like you Bell and Fiendsmith Snake Eye, and even Ritual Beast, that run very long combos, you can see here, Dogwood at 17 minutes of time. 17 minutes. It becomes essentially maxi. Your opponent... And eventually we saw Julio losing because of the life point deficit. Because, you know, Esteban could go a few turns without doing anything. Because he was at around 28,000 life points at the end of this. And 
each time you gain life points, you write it down. Basically, both opponents need to write it down. It takes a lot of time. And Julio was playing at a very fast pace. And I think Dogwood, we're going to do a balance prediction later this week. And I think I have a very good understanding of the format now after seeing this. And thankfully, I did not play in this event because this looks like absolute garbage. Dogwood is actually a culprit of... Uh, uh, if Konami wants to keep designing the game the same way, I think Mulcharmies are good. And Dogwood is horrible because Konami doesn't recognize time and like scamming for time as, as a, an actual win condition. And what Dogwood does is that it tells your opponent, like, basically you have two options. One, you commit, and if you're a combo deck, I'm going to side it in versus you. You're going to commit to your plays. I'm going to gain about 20,000 life points. You're not going to be able to kill me for three turns. I'm just going to win, especially if I'm 10 pi. But also Snake Eye can do that. So you commit, and you can't win. Or you don't commit, and you don't summon. And you end up on a very subpar board, and we've seen that as well. And I just kill you because you have no interruptions. I don't think that's a healthy approach to the game. Yeah. Besides that, time cards were very, very strong. And the other card I want to talk about is Fiendsmith's Lacrima. The new level 6 fusion from the Fiendsmith strategy that for some reason, when it goes to the graveyard, you can shuffle back a light fiend other than itself as cost to burn for 1,200. So if I go into game three with 10 minutes to time and I run Fiendsmith, I can play for 10 minutes. In between that, I'm going to burn you for 12 and I'm going to win. And this is why people started playing Dogwood as well. So these two time cards, I'm going to say like, if Konami said we're going to do a balanced um, before the World Championship at the end of August, which is going to be in a, a month's time from now, they have a month now to break down these events and decide what's bothering them. I think they can ban Fiendsmith's Lacrima from Infinite Forbidden. It's a common. And it might actually happen. Again, we have a balanced prediction video later this week and a breakdown with me and Fi for the podcast, the Table Zero podcast, later this week. So the two time cards, really, really good. Other than that, I think basically what I said before, Runic Stun is another really good natural opponent. We've seen that on feature as well. Another card that we've seen here with Ritual Beast. Let me see if I can uh, get to when it actually gets summoned. We have Arch Nemesis Protoss here. Arch Nemesis Protoss, a card that was relatively recently unbanned. And if you don't know what it does, it is searchable by a lot of means. You can go for um, the Banshee, who's a rank four, which is super generic. Go for Nemesis Flag, bring back something for the Banish, search for a Nemesis card. Then banish three different attributes from your field or graveyard to summon it. And now what they basically did is they lock Esteban from playing fires for three turns. For, for a turn. And it's indestructible. So another floodgate actually came back into the game. And we're seeing now that it actually is able to carry decks. Bestials were in the main. Malcharmy, I think, is actually a good addition. I like the use of Malcharmy. And overall, I think the time cards were just adding to the lack of skill of this format, where it doesn't really matter what you play, it doesn't really matter how you play. If you get hit with, with the time card, close to time, as you can see right here, 28,000 life points, deal with that with eight minutes to time. Literally deal with that. It's really hard. And yeah. Not a lot to say besides that. I think this pretty much sums up the event. I think that we are going to do a lot of breakdowns post this event. This is just like a quick reaction to to a very very entertaining and frustrating finals out of the out of these two. But congratulations to us about congratulations to the EU team for running this. Congratulations to you for taking Dragon Duel back to back. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. This is ones I want to hear because we are going to revisit them in the podcast we're going to go over the comments and see what you guys think thank you so much for watching stick around and click the subscribe button and the bell to know when the podcast and the balance predictions go live thank you so much we'll see you in the next one peace